So when you finish campaign mode for the first time, you get an unlock, or rather a few unlocks. You get the electro, electro bolter, the glass gas cannon, and 20,000 extra energon shards. So these are unlockable weapons you get if you complete it. The electro bolter is modelled after the weapon that Soundwave has in the original cartoon. And the glass gas cannon is likewise modelled after the gun Optimus Prime has in the original cartoon. The electro shock bolter is basically the crossbow. Uh, it's a very accurate weapon, and uh, it pins enemies to the to, to the walls and stuff. It's it takes a couple of hits. It's not the best weapon, but it is, I guess, satisfying if you manage to nail a good shot and pin someone to the ceiling or the wall or whatever surface they happen to be near. It makes them fly away really fast. Not a bad weapon. It's like electro cross bolts. Um, the other weapon is the glass gas cannon. And uh, this is a heavy weapon, so it uses the yellow ammo. And this basically kills any uh, soldier in one hit. And it does a unique thing where it makes their dead body fly into the air, and then flings the dead body back onto the ground again. This is more of an aesthetic thing more than anything, but it's still pretty cool. On a little side note, it's also kind of amusing, when I looked at the next game, Transformers Rise of the Dark Spark, these two weapons are purchasable downloads. Which is a bit silly, considering they're free in the previous game, but speaking of DLC, uh, a kind viewer, Cool Kev K, decided to gift me the uh, Massive Fury DLC pack when it was on sale during the last Steam sales. And uh, what you get is a, basically a bunch of meagre things. Um, one of them is the Generation 1 Optimus Prime skin, which allows you to play through the campaign mode in the original appearance that Optimus Prime has in the cartoons. I find this a little bit strange because I kind of figured Optimus Prime was already kind of G1-y. You know, especially compared to sort of nowadays where he has a more Michael Bay look. I mean, this entire game is kind of very G1 looking, but... I guess they wanted to go all the way with this one, they gave you this downloadable pack and uh, you can pay for the option of the Generation 1 Optimus Prime skin. This skin was also a pre-order bonus at various outlets, I believe at GameStop and on Steam as well. You, if you pre-ordered this game on Steam, you would have gotten this skin for free. I did not pre-order this game on Steam, I bought it on Amazon where it was significantly cheaper and quite frankly I didn't really care too much for skins. While I'm here, I thought I might as well show off. Um, you recall how if you upgraded the riot cannon to maximum, the last upgrade was the planet buster, which allowed the final shot to be a super devastating hit. Uh, Optimus Prime's trademark weapon, the, the ion blaster, uh, also has a similar upgrade. It's called the gambler. Instead of being the final shot though, it's a random shot. But yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, a lot of the weapons, they all upgrade. I've upgraded every weapon to max. Not all of them have a super powerful, like, balance breaking upgrade, but I don't know. It's, it's nice to upgrade your weapons. It makes repeat playthroughs a little more fresh. Now, you can also use the DLC skin in uh, the final level where you fight Megatron, but it's kind of weird. It seems like that in this part, they swap the model out for like a more detailed version of Optimus Prime because here you can see is the regular version but once you actually start the gameplay it goes to Generation 1 Optimus Prime. It's kind of weird. Still, um, you know, we're, we're being Optimus Prime now, regular G1 Optimus Prime. That's an unusual hit. Oh, we've gone back to uh, the regular Optimus Prime. Okay, that's a bit unusual. I don't know, if, if I paid for this skin, I kind of want to see this skin more often. I mean, oh, okay, Megatron just punched me in the face and I returned to G1 Optimus Prime. Yeah, it's just kind of weird. See, look, back to, uh, back to regular Optimus Prime. Now, as well as the G1 Optimus Prime, you also get this skin for Bruticus, the Generation 2 Bruticus skin. Generation 2 was basically a toy line that ran around the early 90s. Um, it was basically recolors of the original toys, repurposed and marketed, so... Um, that's it really, here's the recolored Bruticus. Not really much to say really, it's, uh, it's the same old Bruticus. So, 
the Master Fury pack also contains some other unlocks. Two bonus weapons, which I vaguely hinted at in the second part of the game. Uh, you get two weapons. You get the Throwback Blaster, which is a pistol that fires le retro lasers. Unlike modern lasers, these vintage lasers make a pew-pew noise when fired. And the other downloadable weapon is the Slingshot, which is modelled after the gun, or a Shockwave trademark gun. But here's the throwback pistol, it's made to look like a pistol, like uh, Megatron um, transformed into in the original cartoon. Has, uh, has the original sound effect, it's nice I guess. This has a retro laser sound, just like it says. Um, a slight problem though, it's, it's kind of shit. Like, I don't know, like, I'd expect a gun I paid for with real money. I mean, I didn't pay for it, but, like, I'd expect a gun that you buy with DLC stuff to be a bit better. Like, look how many shots it takes to kill that one guy, like... I mean, when they die, they go into, like, purple and fizzle about. But, it's, it's just kind of shit. I mean... It's kind of accurate, I guess, but there's just no damage to the thing. It's, it's really terrible. Like, I don't know if this was intentional or not, but it's just it's just awful. It's, it's not too similar to the Ion Blaster, I guess, but the Ion Blaster has more firepower. And you can't even upgrade these downloadable weapons either. They, they're, they're, you download them and that's it. You can't upgrade them anymore. That You're stuck like that. Uh, thankfully, the Slingshot weapon is a little bit better. It's a weapon that fires a spinny sling, electro sling, I guess. Um, slow rate of fire, but does a lot of damage, kills most things in one hit. Has a, as you can see, it kind of swings around, so it has a wide area of hit. has a very wide you know, area of effect. So, uh, you know, actually, I just had to fire this down here. Kill, hurt two guys, and, yep, two guys in one hit. Not a bad weapon, this one. Now because I'm a fan of Transformers Fall of Cybertron, I decided on a whim to purchase the art of Transformers Fall of Cybertron, this really neat little art book. It contains a whole bunch of concept art and pretty pictures, and it comes in a nice hard back cover, and a glossy picture of Optimus Prime holding his friend Bumblebee as he dies a slow and painful death. So, I now give you an idea of what's inside. Uh, it's mostly um, it's mostly just concept art of uh, scenery and levels, so here's some pointy buildings. Some more pointy things, uh, not so pointy things, very pointy things. There's a lot of pointy things. He's not very pointy. Uh, he's just Bumblebee. Uh, you know, lots of pointy things. Um, I guess they decided to draw the city of Iacon or the Cybertron before the horrible war because look, it actually looks pretty cool there. And I like this picture because I don't know. It's like a it's like a party going on. You never see this in the game. I don't know why they drew this, but here's a robot party. And I like this one because, you know, you got this Decepticon guy here, and he's like, Hey babe, how's it hanging? You wanna hang out with the real stud? And then this lady's clearly not having any of it. She's just trying to enjoy her drink, and, you know, the guy's just not leaving her alone and not getting the hint. And, you know, this lady, she doesn't even, you know, she doesn't care. And then there's this bartender who's like, I have no legs! And there's Brawl in the background, for some reason. I didn't realize Brawl's a drinker, but he seems like that kind of guy who would drink. Um, yeah, so, uh, more concept art of pointy things, lots of things, uh, more concept art. It's all very pretty pictures, very nicely drawn, I, I'll give it that much. But it's a very lot, it's lots of pointy things. It's not so much pictures of the Transformers themselves, it's just interesting concept art. I mean, you know, you never see this in the game. But it's all very pretty and nice to look at. I, know, I won't show you the whole book, but it basically has concept arts for, for each of the different areas. It goes through each chapter of the game and details the different ideas that has in different scenarios. And you can tell a lot of attention went into this game. Look, lots of pointy things. There's a, lots of ruins and metal structures. Here's Vortex. Uh, uh, look, there's a sea of rust. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of pictures with like dead giant robots around, but you never really see as that much. Uh, here's the concept art of the um, the Energon Transporter, if you remember from Chapter 6, I think, when you're playing a swindle and you're driving underneath the uh, the giant uh, transporter. But I showed this off during the video, but if you have a look, there's a concept art of the transporter carrying Trypticon, 
Now, in the game, it's carrying Energon, so at some point in development they had to change the plot so that Triptychon was obtained later on. Um, I think I should be able to find a picture of more ideas of that, but in the meantime here is some more concept art of drawings. Look, here's Bruticus! And uh, I think the other Compaticons are here as well, yep, you got the Brawl, and all the other things, lots of more pointy buildings. Very pointy things, more pointy things. Uh, yep, yeah, there's the City of Icon in Flames. Uh, this is the chapter where Megatron has to go and get Trypticon. As you can see, the concept for where they were holding him changed various to various degrees. You know, here he was being held by these electric boogaloo thingamajigs. Uh, and then, look, here's another piece of concept, interesting concept. I mentioned this during the video, but uh, instead he's being transported by an armada of Autobot spaceships. So they had a few ideas of what to do with Trypticon, but I guess for some reason they decided to scrap it all. But hey, it's all pretty cool. More pointy things, more scenarios. I won't show the whole book off. I mean, here's, you know, the Grimlock section. Uh, more pointy things. Pointy, pointy, pointy. Uh, shush. Here's Grimlock. Uh-huh. And blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I won't show you the whole bit, but, you know, here's some more concept art, unused concepts. This one's quite an interesting chapter. Uh, you know, here's some more characters. Some of these are in multiplayer, some of them just won't, didn't make it into the game at all, but they're characters from the cartoon series. Um, you know, here's the, the Guardian, the Sentry you see throughout the stealth sections. Look, there's Ravage, Soundwave's other cassette tape robot. You never see him in the game. And here's the Leapers, the Decepticon Leapers. They transform into jet planes. But you never see that in the game. It's a shame, really, because look, they even like tran they You can even see them transforming or, or or something. I don't know, but you never see it in the game, which is a shame, really. More characters that didn't make it into the game. Unused concepts. An underwater level in the Sea of Rust. I guess I decided to scrap that for some reason. Lots of unused concepts. Lots of pretty pictures. Uh, yep. Uh, Sharkticons. Remember those from the movie? Sharkticons. <laughs> Uh, I wonder why they didn't use those. Um, yeah, that's it, really. So, um, yeah, it's not a bad book, really. Uh, if, if you like Transformers, if you like pretty pictures, you, you, you could do worse, I suppose. There could be more pictures of the Transformers themselves, but I don't know. What do you think? I think it's a good book. It has plenty of quality work from the artists of the game. No, I believe the book is lacking a certain Decepticon muster. It requires more finesse in its art design. Cock. I thought I'd quickly show off the, uh, com the cooperative multiplayer mode, Escalation, which is basically the Horde mode, popularized, I guess, by the likes of Call of Duty and... Uh, you know, like it's like a zombie horde mode, more or less. It's not zombies though. It's just uh, you have to survive. You get points by killing things, and you use those points to upgrade yourself, get you know, get weapons, and also to add defenses to the base. It's not a bad game mode. It can get pretty frantic when you're trying to fight all these enemies, and you get lots of enemy types that you don't normally get in single player, which is actually a nice touch. And um, you know, when you die, you have a chance to be revived by your teammate. It can all get very hectic. And you have four distinct roles you can play. You have uh, the ammo guy. Uh, I'm playing him right now. If you put down the bubble, people stay inside this little field of like this little shield. They slowly replenish their ammo, so it's like a little dispenser. Um, as well as this, you can also play the role of the medic. The medic, of course, is self-explanatory. They heal things. I guess the other cool thing about escalation mode is you can play as you know, popular Transformers characters that you don't normally play as in the single-player campaign. As you can see, we are playing as Ratchet, everyone's favourite, or perhaps the only medic they have, because he's always the medic in every Transformers. But yeah, you can play as him and he's the medic. And, oh, looks like Optimus Prime's in a bit of trouble. We'll just top him up in health. See? It's all pretty simple stuff. Now the other role you can have is basically the sentry gun guy. You can place down a sentry gun and it'll shoot enemies. And it's a support role, kind of. Uh, and as you can see here, we're playing as Warpath. He transforms into a tank. He, again, we saw him a lot in the single player campaign, but now we can actually play as him. Of course, he was a playable character in the previous game, uh, War for Cybertron. 
But he's back here in the cooperative multiplayer mode. Which is all nice. So you have gun turret guy, you have healer guy, and you also have ammo guy. Uh, the last role in the group is the shield guy. Um, shield guy seems a bit shit to be honest. I don't really know what his role in the team is. He doesn't seem to be like... He doesn't... Like the shield doesn't even do a good job of blocking fire. It just... I don't really know what purpose it has. It doesn't like shield... I mean, I guess if you stand in front of another teammate, you can shield them, but that's about it, really. It's not very... It's not very good, in my opinion. Uh, I'd much rather be one of the other roles. But yeah, it's just... Uh, I mean, I, I guess you know how these game modes work. You, you have 15 waves. If you manage to survive all 15 waves, you win. And that's it, really. That's escalation mode. Good luck actually playing it, though, because no one plays multiplayer anymore. Now there's also a peculiar thing I want to point out. If you recall back in chapter 11, when we were playing as Grimlock, at the end of that chapter, we found a tape cassette that was basically a repeat of an earlier one we found. It turns out they're not actually exactly the same. I'll let you listen to both of them. Just about enough of these Insecticons. Shockwave thinks of them as his pets, and he may believe he controls them, but truth be told, they do whatever they want on the battlefield. One of those oil holes slammed right into me, about busted my armor. So let's just say, I put his assets in stasis. Shockwave should really find himself some new pets. I've had just about enough of these Insecticons. Shockwave thinks of them as his pets, and he may believe he controls them, but truth be told, they do whatever they want on the battlefield. And I may have to work alongside them, but I don't like it. They're cannibalistic. One of them goes down, another will devour it. Feed on its energy. I had a friendly fire incident a couple cycles back. One of those oil holes slammed right into me, about busted my armor. So let's just say, I put his assets in stasis. Shockwave should really find himself some new pets. Why do you fire at me? 